Third point, the hedge fund run by the activist investor Daniel Loeb is going public now with its latest campaign against Sony, its second in the past six years. In a letter sent to the firm's investors last night, Third Point urges the company to spin off its semiconductor business. Third Point also says Sony should consider selling its stakes in other businesses, including Sony Financial and Spotify. Third Point making that case in a more than 100-page <coughs> slide presentation that the semi-business, which Mr. Loeb said is treated as an afterthought, could be worth as much as $35 billion within five years. My sources tell me the firm started building its stake back in February when the stock sold off sharply into the low to mid 40s. It's also worth noting that because the position was taken in Third Point's main funds and through a special purpose vehicle, a dedicated one, that lockup is typically two to three years, which means Third Point likely sees this as a long term play. The firm notes in its presentation that it sees this situation much like Nestle, which Third Point pushed to spin off underperforming businesses to better enhance value. Third Point still owns that stock, has made a profit of more than a half billion dollars in two years, as shares are up 47 percent since March of 2017. And one last note, it was reported that Mr. Loeb and Sony CEO met in New York last week, that it was cordial. Loeb even citing Mr. Yoshida's skilled leadership in last night's letter. Uh, inter interesting from a, yeah. uh, a high-performing activist investor. Yeah, and you, ca you can't argue with him. He, he makes two very important points. First, the people covering this stock are like people that cover Casio wristwatches because they're Asian electronics analysts. But this company is so much more than that. But because it's a conglomerate, it's got this conglomerate taint or discount, as they would call it. And that's not going to go away while it has stakes in all these far-flung businesses and is tough to analyze and it's tough to say what is the pure play, what's the story. And the only evidence you need that that's the case is that it's selling 11 times next year's earnings. And it should not be because the business is actually running well and, and doing well in its core businesses. So why is it 11 times forward? How can you argue with him? Of course, that's the reason. And then the second thing is it's actually at a lower valuation than uh, where it was trading when he first got involved in 2013. So they've listened to him. They've streamlined somewhat, but they have to go all the way. And I think that'll be good for shareholders. And the Nestle example is, is a good one. So I, I agree with what he's saying. And I think, uh, I, I think other shareholders probably will, too. Yeah, they, they you know, obviously point to the similarities to Nestle. Yep. And they sure hope the stock performance is similar as well. We set up 47% since they took that position and started their campaign against Nestle, which they still hold, Steph. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason it trades at 11 times is because it is a conglomerate. So their entertainment assets are actually top of the line, right? It's everything Sony else. Sony pictures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, it's, and, and, and the whole gaming aspect, too, that is getting underappreciated because it's mir mirrored down into all these other things, like the financial business, which also could be spun out. Olymp Olympus could be spun out. Semis could be spun out. Semis actually is a pretty good business, but it's not getting any credit because, well, again... It, they say it's going to be a $35 billion business in five years. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. That's why it's not getting appreciated in this conglomerate structure. So I think there's a lot of value to be unlocked, even now, even after the stock has had a nice run.